Let's go through how to create title blocks for detailed drawings in Autodesk Inventor. I'm going to walk you through the process in creating this title block down here. It's automatically going to fill those fields with the eye properties from your model, and it is designed for size A paper. Let's get started. So there are the dimensions we're going to use. Now I'm going to look at a couple of other things, and it's how this text looks right here. This the word company right here, that's going to show up as static text that's not going to change. But this company right here is in those brackets and it's capital letters. That's dynamic text. It will change to match the fields that you're going to fill out in your part. Same thing with project and title and there's a whole bunch over here. All right, let's start creating our title block. I'm going to go up to new. Make sure we're in the metric templates. I'm going to go down here. We're going to use the ANSI millimeter drawing one. Click on ANSI millimeter and create. Now right now, this is a large D size drawing. We're gonna set this up to work on A size, your standard eight and a half by 11 inch paper. I'm gonna go up here to sheet, right click, and I'm going to edit sheet. And instead of size D, we're gonna go up to A, that's your standard size paper, and hit okay. It shrinks your sheet down, but we've got this massive title block down in the corner. That title block was the right size for a massive sheet of paper, but it takes up too much space on this one. So we're going to delete that and make our own. Right click on that, delete it. I'm gonna go up here to drawing resources, expand that, expand the title blocks. And there's a couple here, there's ANSI large, ANSI A. Now the ANSI A would probably work for us, but we're gonna do a custom one ourselves. So to do that, we'll go up to title blocks, right click, define new title block. And now our initial title block template. We'll rename it once we're done. So we're gonna start doing a sketch here. You'll notice we're now in the sketch environment. It automatically pops it up for us. So we're gonna create a sketch, and we're gonna kind of put it wherever there happens to be room. It will automatically pop it down in the corner of the drawing for us. We're going to do a rectangle, and it's going to be a little bigger than this. I'm gonna start typing in my numbers. I know it needs to be 260 millimeters wide. Hit tab, move up to the other one field, 20 millimeters tall. Okay, there's the basic outline of my title block. I'm gonna put some lines in. I wanna break it into five sections. We're just gonna put the lines in and we will dimension them into the correct spots in a bit. Four lines, five sections, time to dimension. This section right here should have a width of 35 millimeters. This section should have a dimension width of 15 millimeters. Our next section should be 100 millimeters. I'm going to click on that, change it to 100 millimeters. This piece right here should be 50 millimeters. And our last piece should end up being 60 millimeters. I'm going to dimension it just to check that I get 60 millimeters, but because we, everything else has already been dimensioned, it's going to yell at me and want to create a driven dimension. And that's okay. This is just a double check right now. Click. Look, 60 millimeters. There, it yelled at me. We're going to accept that driven dimension, 60 millimeters. Everything looks good with that. Let's put some horizontal lines through it. Grab a line. Now I'm going to want to click on the exact center. See how it wants to snap to the center there? Keep it parallel, move over to the other side, draw the line to there. This middle block does not have a line through it, but the rest of them do. I'm going to zoom things around a bit. I want to create a line from the middle of that all the way to the end. Perfect. We've got all our boxes. All we need to do now is start putting our text in. But before we put our text in, let's draw some guidelines in there so we know exactly where the corner of the text should start. The text is going to be 1.5 millimeters from the left and the top of each box. Now, in order to, in order to do that, we're going to create some guidelines. We're going to use another tool up here called Sketch Only Lines. So if I'm going to turn that on, and you see it's highlighted, so it's turned on now. What that means is any lines that I draw now will only show up in the sketch. When I finish the sketch, they're gone. They're still hiding in there, but they don't show up in the final drawing. Just like these dimensions right here show up in the sketch, but they don't show up in the final drawing. It's just a tool we use as we're drawing. Let's use offset. I'm gonna click on this edge and we're gonna offset the whole thing. We're gonna go in 1.5 millimeters. Then I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna offset all the other lines. This is a center line. My text needs to go 1.5 millimeters below it. I'm still in sketch only. If I take my offset, click, drag it down, type in 1.5. Take my horizontal lines, still using offset, give it a direction, type in 1.5. We're going to keep on going 
So we've got all of our lines done. Okay, I think I've got all of my guidelines in. Yep, let's start putting our text in. This box right here is gonna be the company name. So I'm gonna grab my text box. I'm not gonna draw it right in the corner because I'm gonna snug it up in there afterwards. But let's draw a text box that takes up about the space that we're going to be putting our letters in. We're gonna use the standard font and the standard font size. And this is going to be company name. So type in company, put a colon, and I use a space. The next piece that we want to use, we're gonna use some dynamic text, which is automatically going to pull the proper eye properties field from our model. What this means, if you set this title block up properly, when you bring in a model, it automatically populates it with the information from the model. So how we do that, I'm going to go up here to this drop down. I'm going to grab a model properties. Go to this drop down over here. I'm going to pick the one I want. I want the company. Now it's not in there yet. I have to go over here. I have to add a text parameter. Notice how it's in those hard angled brackets and capital letters for company. That's our dynamic text. Don't worry that it ended up in a line below it. It should show up properly on the next screen. If it doesn't, we'll come back and play with it. I didn't hit enter. It just showed up that way because it didn't seem to fit. When I hit OK, it shows up just fine. Last thing I need to do is I need to make sure that this dot right here is up in the corner. So I'll zoom in on that. I want this dot in the corner. I'm going to use the coincident constraint. Click on the dot. Click on the line above so it's coincident with that guideline. Click on the dot, click on the line on the left so it's coincident with that line, and bang, it's up in my corner. Zoom out. That's what I want. Remember this line right here? That's a sketch only line. It's a guideline that's going to disappear. Keep going with our text. Down in this corner, we're going to put the author's name. So whoever did the drawing, that is your name, author colon. So once again, back into the model properties. And this time we want author. Insert that in. So add the direct text parameter. It's showing up inside of those hard edged brackets. Perfect. Snug it up into the corner. So I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to use the coincident constraint. Say so pick the dot. Coincident to that line. Pick the dot, coincident to that line. That's exactly where I want it. Move over. Remember, you can scroll this way by clicking and holding the mouse wheel and then moving the mouse. Allows you to scroll around your document. Next, we're going to put a text field in this big wide box. We want to write drawings in millimeters unless otherwise specified. What that means, if I write that in, if you see a number on the drawing, then you assume that it is millimeter. If we're going to use something else to measure, we'd label it as so. Hit OK. Snug it up into the corner. And let's keep going. This next box is the module that you're working on right now. For this one, we're going to use the model properties. We're going to use the project name. Insert that text field. OK. Snug it up. Down here is the title of the individual drawing. That's also going to be pulled from the model properties. Title. Insert that text field. Hit OK. Snug it up to the corner. All right, on this end, things are going to get a little bit crowded. Dynamic text takes up a lot of room when the actual field that's gonna get filled in might not. It's going to look messy here in our sketch as we're editing it, but the final product will look good. Now, as I look at this, I realize I missed one more line right here. I'm going to grab a line, fill that in, and we'll dimension it. So the distance from this line to that line should be 18 millimeters. I need a guideline as well. So I'm going to offset that line. 1.5 millimeters. 
and let's fill in these boxes. Now, because they're going to get crowded, I'm actually going to do it in a different order. I'm going to go down to this bottom left hand corner here, draw a box for that. This corner, that's going to be my sheet size. So, size, I'm going to hit enter because I want this to show up on the next line. And from here, I'm going to go into sheet properties. And I want the sheet size. Insert that. Hit OK. And you see how this dynamic text takes up more space than what you've actually got? That's OK. Because the sheet size is going to be a single letter, whereas the dynamic text variable name, that's a whole bunch of letters. It'll look fine in the end, especially once we snug it up into the corner. Up in this box, make some text. We are going to write, we're going to write revision number. So which version of your drawing is this? How many times have you had to go back and edit it? Nothing wrong with multiple revisions, but if you're looking at a drawing, you want to know that you've got the most recent version. The revision, I hit enter, and I'm going to go in, back into model properties. I'm looking for revision number, right there. Insert that in, hit okay. And you see how that's starting to overlap? That's why I said it's going to get messy, but it will look good in the final version. Snug that into the corner. This box right here, that's going to have the creation date. When did you create your model? Not when did you create the drawing, but when did you create the model? Fill that with a text box. We're not going to put any static text in this one. This is just going to give me a date, and that date is going to be pulled off of the model. I'm going to go into Model Properties, and we want Creation Date. Right there. Insert that in. Hit OK. Snug it up to the corner. There's the creation date. Down in this box, we're going to put the drawing scale. This is going to be the scale of the initial view that you put in. Scale. I'm going to hit Enter because I want the dynamic text to show up on the next line. We're going to go down here to Sheet Properties. And look, initial view scale is the first one that pops up. That's the one we want. Insert that. Hit OK. Put it in the corner. Zoom in once again, it's getting complicated to see. And it also takes up more space than we've got, and that's okay. Last one is the sheet number. I'm going to type in sheet. I'm going to hit a colon. Now I haven't hit enter yet, that's just what it looked like on the screen when I started writing it. Now I'm going to hit enter because I want the dynamic text to be on the next line. Now pay attention, I'm going to use two separate dynamic text fields in this one. First one, we want the number of sheet we're on. I'm going to hit the drop down. We're going to go to Sheet Properties and Sheet Number. Insert that. Now we want it to look like a fraction, so you know, 2 of 4, 3 of 5, 2 of 2. I'm going to hit a slash. I didn't hit enter, it automatically did that. And now we're going to put in the total number of sheets. Click my drop down. Now I don't know why there's two different parts here, or there's two different sets of properties. They could have been combined into one. The drawing properties actually only has the number of sheets in it. That's the one we want. Insert it in, and hit OK. And that really doesn't fit well on the space, but it'll look good when it's done. Let's snug it up to the corner. All my boxes have been filled up with text or dynamic text. I think I've got this. I'm going to click on Finish Sketch. And it wants me to give this title block a name. So this is ANSI. This is an A size paper, so I'll put ANSI A. And just to give it another name, we're going to call it Thin, because it's a thin one, long and thin. Let's save that. I zoom out. Now it's not there yet to put it in. I'm going to go up into my title blocks here in my browser and I'm going to double click on ANSI A Thin. That's the one we just created. Double click. It shows up right there automatically in the bottom of my page. 
Let's zoom in and make sure everything looks good. Notice how the dynamic text has not been filled in because we haven't put a model in. So none of that is filled in yet. Nope, if I look down here, I've got a couple of errors. Some of these guidelines showed up. When I was using the sketch only lines, somehow I must have clicked them off or forgot to put them on. That's okay, we can go back in and edit that. So to go back in and edit this, I'm gonna go back up into my browser, go to the title block I'm using, this ANSI A Thin, right click and edit. And it brings me right into that part. Now I had two lines that didn't show up proper. This line, I'm gonna click on, click on it and then click sketch only. And then this line, I'm gonna click on sketch only. And now it's listed as sketch only, we're good. Finish sketch, save the edits, yes. Perfect. Looks like I want it to. Now the last thing I want to do is I want to save this as a template so it's quick and easy to use again later. I don't want to have to create this every time I do a drawing. I'm going to make it once and I'm going to keep reusing it. So in order to do that, we're going to go up to File, down to Save As, and we want to save Copy as a Template. Now it should automatically come to where your templates are stored. I'll click the drop down just to make sure it's in the right spot. We're going to go into metric because that's what it is. And this is an ANSI millimeters one, but we want to make sure it's listed as ANSI A. You notice I've already saved one. So I'm going to click on, I'm going to type in ANSI A and then millimeters. That's the title I want to save this as so I can find it again. Save. Now, you shouldn't have to replace it because you shouldn't have one. Don't replace one that's already there. Make sure you've got your own name. But I've done this before. There, I've got my custom title block. Last thing I'm going to do is show you how to import a title block from another template. Maybe you've created one before and you're making a new template and you want to just copy that in instead of drawing it out by hand. There's an easy way to do it. This is the template I want to insert the title block to. I'm going to go down here. I've got this other drawing open. This is a different template. I've got some different title blocks in there. So if I want to create copy this ANSI size A title block in, I'm actually going to go into it. I'm going to right click on that. And I'm going to hit copy. Go back to the drawing four. This is the one I'm working on. Go back into title blocks, right click, and paste. Notice how now I've got a new title block uh, style. If I want to swap to that title block style, even if I've got this one already in there, I can go expand the sheet. Let's right click and delete the ANSI A thin. And let's go assignment size A. And there is that other title block. Spoiler alert, this is going to be your assignment. It's creating this title block right here. And that's how we do custom title blocks in Inventor.